Blending is one of the most basic tasks in the professional kitchen. But there's more to blending food than many of us realize. Most chefs would agree that bigger is better when it comes to motors. And our blender, a wearing extreme, has as big a motor as you can get before the lights in the kitchen start to dim. The design of the pitcher and the blades is critical. The blades don't simply cut the food down to size, instead they act in concert with the shape of the pitcher to compress, shear, and even cavitate the blending food. And flow is also important. A well-engineered pitcher, like the one on our wearing blender, keeps the food flowing past the blades without the need to plunge a spatula into the mix. As you can clearly see here, liquid at the top of the pitcher is being pulled down by the blades before being cut and flung out to the sides of the pitcher. This is efficient blending. A final factor is the durability of the blades. A solid professional blender forges its blades from exotic steel alloys that are extremely hard, keeping the edges sharp even after grinding the toughest foods down to size. Really hard, durable foods strain the motor and work to dull the blades. An extreme example is grinding wood chips into small fragments for our kitchen smoker. A lesser blender would overheat before getting the job done and the blades would quickly dull. But not everything in the kitchen needs such brute force. Sometimes it's better to use a bit of finesse and turn down the speed of the blade to do the best job, like for our olive puree. A clever and fast way to remove pits from olives for making tapenades or purees is by blending them on the lowest setting. Blend the olives with no liquid for about 30 seconds or until the pits are completely clean. Working on the lowest setting allows you to chop through the meat of the olive but not crack the pit into shards. Once you have blended the olives for about 20 to 30 seconds, you can empty them out into a container and separate out the undamaged pits. At this point, you are ready to make your tapenade, or you can return the olive meat to the blender and continue to blend into a puree. With the aid of Waring's high-powered motor, you can blend durable foods like raw carrots into a soup with nothing more than a little water and thyme. To do this, add clean and trim product to the blender and add just enough water to blend. Once the food begins to cook from heat created by friction, it is only a matter of minutes until it becomes a velvety smooth puree. But blenders can only puree something so fine, so blending for long periods of time will not yield an increasingly fine puree. However, the longer you blend the puree, the more the flavor will develop and change as it becomes hotter and further reduced. This is by far the easiest way we know how to make a smooth vegetable puree. In order to blend something like peanuts, which seem very dry but contain a large amount of oil, it is important not to blend too quickly. You will also need to consider the volume you are blending. Too little and the peanuts are flung to the sides and never make contact with the blade. Too much and the peanuts will stop flowing and the blades will free spin, at which point you will then need to scrape down the sides over and over and this can become a huge waste of time. To blend the peanuts into a butter with minimal effort, Start with about 600 grams of nuts on the lowest setting until they become fine pieces and begin to flow. At this point, you can begin to slowly turn up the speed. As a blender becomes warmer, the fat in the nuts begins to thin, and as this happens, the puree will begin to flow smoother and smoother. You can decide when the nut butter is finished based on how coarse or how fine you want your nut butter. These are just a few of the many amazing things you can do with the Waring Extreme Blender. With its powerful motor, excellent blade design, and lasting durability, the Waring Extreme is a great addition to any commercial kitchen.